talk to you and whatever. But yeah, you're gonna have a, a couple of my friends are like, I'd come and Mike was like, I, he doesn't want to train at Long Island MMA anymore. So I'm like, hmm. So you should come train with John. So almost like this over here, a little better, but fucking your drink is really good. Yeah, that was what to do. Better? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. it's short and it's short. Whatever short. works. Getting everyone actually. Yeah. Counting down from five, four, And we are back in the Manimal Zone. Kerry, I'm really excited. Very excited today. We have in studio the 105-pound Invicta champ, Alicia Zapatella. Hi. Hi. Alicia, hey. half my Zapatella. Yeah, half pint. <laughs> I'm so excited to be here and actually be in person. I know. Yeah. Thank the God so we get to actually be in person a little bit. Right. It's been rough out there. Mm -hmm. How is it where you train? Um, actually, things are pretty normal where I train. Huh. Um, Michigan is pretty uh, is shut down for the most, like, Michigan's pretty strict right now. But with training with James Gray, he has kind of disregarded everything and it's it's been all right so far. So. Hold on, let's not get anyone in trouble. Oh, he, out, he, he, he has the disregard. He's not working. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> They're outside training. He, he They're opened, training out. No, he he like went, <laughs> no no he, he opened, was on Fox News. Yeah, he openly oh, yeah. defied the um the the order. He put a huge YouTube video about it. He was on a bunch of news outlets. He was contacted, and then nobody ever did anything. So we've kind of been just doing our thing normally. They said they were going to sue him. They never sued him. They said they were going to sue him. They never sued him. They said they were going to find him. They never. They did. They let him rock on. I keep on telling you know people, what? if you do what you want... I know issue, you, right? No, 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 one sick, no one got sick. No. It's not this... I don't no. know why they think, like, the gym is the place that has right. these COVID-filled yeah. orgies. It's I, not happening. It's I've like been people in the gym are relatively healthy. Yeah, I've been tested uh, three times for COVID, and I've been fine every time. I've <laughs> I, I roll with so many people. I... Training as usual. Yeah, I, I've been living as usual, as normal. Um, Me too. So. I can't. And I haven't. Like, shut everything down here. So only okay. recently am I able to mm -hmm. train like again for real. Um, so no. it's really good that you were able to train. You looked in great shape. Yeah, thank you. For your last fight. Like it didn't look like you missed a step. I mean, you actually look, to me, you even were peaking. You were peaking better in that fight uh -huh. than your last fight. Mm -hmm. I, you I agree. Like, how did the training for that fight go? Did you feel like everything was in line? Because you looked... Absolutely. That every... was one of your best performances. Thank I mean, you. watch it to me. Thank you. Um, I, you I felt absolutely amazing. I didn't get tired at all. I liked the five rounds more than the three rounds because that gave me a chance to just kind of feel out the fight and see where... I could actually be beating this girl. It gave me more time to strategize, really. Um, I train cardio more than I've ever trained cardio for any fight. Um, I think I was training 16 times a week sometimes. During, sessions. yeah. Um, I did a lot of strength, strength and strength and cardio. Yeah. Strength and conditioning and cardio. Well, um, so I knew that I was not going to get tired for this fight. Uh, yeah. So you felt good knowing you could push the pace. What round did you get to finish? Because you did finish that fight. You didn't have to go that distance. So you didn't have to get into the fifth round. Yep. You was a minute and 20 seconds into the into the fourth round. Now, were you sparring five rounds, yep. five round matches before you had this title fight? Or was yep. this the first time you've picked up five rounds? Like we in your previous fights? Um, like no, done... I've, I've definitely sparred five rounds before. Yeah. Um, this, so being being quarantined to one room, um, for at least a day, and then being quarantined to the hotel for that's four when you days. Went to uh, where was the fight? Kansas. City? Kansas City. Kansas City, not so, Oklahoma. Right. I know usually do them there. It's sometimes I get mixed up. Yeah. So the fights in Kansas um, City, mm -hmm. you go there early to quarantine mm -hmm. for Invicta. Yep. They test you when you get there. Yep. Okay. So I can't leave my room for twenty four hours at least. I think it was over twenty four hours, and then for. Four days, I can't leave the hotel. So <laughs> I, I had to plan around that because the last fight, I had gotten tired and 
honestly, I, I got lethargic all week. I think it was because I was sitting around. I didn't really plan for this. Mm-hmm. So this time my strength and conditioning coach, he gave me workouts that I could be doing every week. And just, I mean, not every week, every every day. Like different things, full body workouts just to stay like active and, you know. You're an athlete. You're a lifelong athlete, right? Yeah. So for you, it's probably really important to have like a routine. Yeah. Like without routine, it's mm-hmm. probably easy for you to just... Oh, yeah. People yeah. like, all right, I'm just going to wait. <laughs> it's like, okay. all right, I'm going to relax and meditate. You yeah. know, you're like, okay. Honestly, that's what, so all week, this was the first time I ever got my own room. And oh, you said, you yeah, did yeah. you're fighting for the title. Yeah, so. You so, have the headline, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, Is that the first time you headline a card? No. Oh. No. That is the first time, though, obviously. And we fought in a five round fight. Yeah. Um, that's the first time that I got two rooms. So basically all I did always like <laughs> I could I I could Score. like shut my room. It obviously was connected to my coaches. So I should could like shut my door and be on my own whenever I wanted to be, or I could go in there and you know, like hang out with them. But for the most part, what I did most of the week was I, I did a lot of internal stuff. So I mm. I wrote, I I journaled a lot. And then I would read and meditate. Mm. Or draw, the, which drawing is like med- draw I love it. It's oh, it's pretty honest. meditative for me too as well. Mm-hmm. Art is yeah yeah. Is there something in particular you like to draw? Mm. Draw? Did I say draw? Draw? No, you said draw. Draw. Usually I draw. <laughs> <laughs> Usually I draw whatever is um of interest to me at the moment. I've been trying to draw more realistic stuff lately. Mm. Um, but. I'm really good at drawing anything that isn't realistic, though. So, I'm trying to branch out and get better. I drew Freya um, a couple weeks ago, and she turned out all right. Freya. That's right. We yeah. should honor the old gods. <laughs> so, Freya takes half of all the uh, yeah. people that die in battle. So, Odin takes half to Valhalla in yeah. Norse mythology, and Freya takes the other half. Mm-hmm. And they actually survive Ragnarok, right? Mm-hmm. They, yeah. They're good to rock. Yeah. You know, so, <laughs> so it's all right. But yeah, at least that's funny. You're very spiritual, too. Mm-hmm. We were talking mm-hmm. about that yeah. uh, when we first met. And I think sometimes it's hard for people to understand a spirituality that might be eclectic. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Um, I try to learn about, like, all the different religions, really. Um, I'm trying to learn, take something from every walk of life. And, and now, what's your... Yeah. background because okay so i love your uh your fight kit oh, thank you your outfit thank great you. laying outfit great like what's is it cultural significance for the colors um really it's uh is it just dope i mean what is it it's like it's i don't like the color like it looks the, bu- so- the butterfly is very um symbolic for me um i decided to get this after i got on a vision quest i figured out a lot about myself kind of re- reassessed everything about my life and i felt as though i was a butterfly emerging um and it's it's also a symbol of power and, and some other things and so really i i just took that and i ran with it and um and also i've been getting much better footwork so yeah. Yeah. You have a few purposes there. You're like, yeah, don't, the, and the color. It's like true. almost a reminder to you. It's like, don't be so slow. Yeah. Mm. It's like, don't be plotty. Yeah. Because sometimes so, your style, mm-hmm. uh, wrestling heavy, mm-hmm. right? Uh, you've been wrestling since you're five years yeah, old. So forever. sometimes <laughs> exactly, yeah. you can become stand up wise mm-hmm. slightly plotty if you get mm-hmm. lazy. Mm-hmm. Yep. So is that almost like a reminder? Like, it's just the floor of the style. Exactly. Right? I, yeah. Like, this styles make fights. And every mm-hmm. style comes with it. Mm-hmm. A floor that if you're not careful... Right, exactly. Right, can, ...can be exactly. utilized. Yep. So there's the, the butterfly is almost like, oh, move mm-hmm. a little faster, right? Exactly, yeah. yep. Like, yep. don't get settled. I'm, and, yep, I'm yeah. completely new fighter, just trying so to... Good. Yeah. Yeah. And your footwork yep. did look really good in the fight, yeah. actually. Thank you. It looked, I said that uh, yeah. when we interviewed You definitely about it. took the lessons. Yeah. So I think there's uh, there's something um, to be said for someone that can learn powerful lessons in victory. Mm-hmm. And I thought you did this. Uh, so you won the fight mm-hmm. before this one. You won this one, of course, you won the title. But before that, you yep. Lindsay Van Zandt, tough fight, took a ton of lessons away, it seems mm-hmm. like. And then, and that's from a win. Some yes. people can't, it's difficult for them to take lessons away from a win. 
Yes. So I was not the most proud of my um, performance, so I wanted to reflect on it, see how I could really improve, mm -hmm. um, even though I did win. And actually what I'm really proud of, going, uh, going back and watching my last fight, watching all of their key points leading up to the fight, what they thought would get me victory, mm -hmm. every single one of those. I had worked on and gotten better at. Yeah. Um, like especially like my cardio. Like Julie Kedzie even said it right in yeah. in like live that uh well I might have to eat my words because it looks like Alicia's fresh in round. Yeah. Eight, I don't know if it was round three or round four that she said that. But yep. Because yeah. she gave you if you if you listen to commentary from your fight with Lindsay, mm -hmm. she was uh, she was a little I thought a little tough on you in that fight with Lindsay. But that was just mm -hmm. my personal opinion. And then also I'm watching this fight and I said I'm like you know. I said, I want to see you in a five-round fight because I think mm -hmm. that everybody's going to have a really different opinion. And when she said that, I was like, exactly what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. It yeah, Re I really must feel good uh -huh. to silence critics uh, yeah. like a floor, right? Tell so them about uh, the, the, how many girls uh, picked you to win that you fought and how many didn't. It was insane. And the one that did, I was like, I kind of expected. I yep. was very, like, not shocked by that. Oh, sorry. No. Oh. So, a lot of the girls that I've actually fought wanted um, my opponent to win, but like, I, I guess that if people have beat me, I really want them to do well, and I, mean, I, I want everyone to do well, I want it good for everybody, but overall, if somebody beats me, and I, if, 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 if they start doing really well, then that'll look good for me, and... Everyone no, you fight only, needs to be a killer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This way, yeah. like when they fight, whether you win or lose to them, really, mm -hmm. yeah. everyone you fight has to be a killer. But if yeah. they beat you, they have to kill even more. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that you, yeah. it's true. Yeah. And if you yeah. beat someone, you want them to do good to make you. Exactly. I mean, it, we only can judge ourselves in relation to others. Here's mm -hmm. the problem with, with everything we do. Yeah. That the only way we can actually judge ourselves in fighting is mm -hmm. in our relation to our competition mm -hmm. with others. Yep. So we never could really know, yep. right, how that's going to turn out, what level everyone's at, what level we're at. Mm -hmm. So their success gives us stratification. Exactly, yep. The more fights that happen, the more that whole web fleshes out, it shows us where we are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, I'm good. That's pretty powerful. See you guys later. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you a personal question. Okay. Did you sleep with the belt? <laughs> it, it was right next to me. Just oh, right. I, that I, belt I, looks dope too. Thank you. I, I didn't cuddle it, but it was like it was on the other side of. It was on yeah, the, yeah. Like you usually I sleep with a pillow, and it was like on the other side of the pillow. So. <laughs> Telling a pillow was right next pillow. to it. Oh, he was. He was. He was I, 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 I got your to belt's the, male. No, no, it's a female. Oh, you she, said he was. Oh, <laughs> it, she it, was it, the belt's female. Yeah, she, she was right next to me. Was laying there. I woke up in the morning like, oh, that, that's pretty. That is that's pretty. Good. That's the best so, view ever. Yeah, I, I don't like let myself like actually like process wins that well. Like I've won my entire life, so like not not to sound like. You know, she's a winner. What, what was that? Can you I, say that again? I've won my entire life. Hey, listen, if you're a winner, you're a winner. I so mean. now that's how I found Alicia was through her wrestling career. Mm -hmm. So it's like everything that I've seen from her wrestling to, you know, amateur MMA and to her, you know, now winning the belt. I've watched like the very mm -hmm. few losses that you have, we've spoken about and mm -hmm. you never took them ever hard like yeah. ever and it's funny you were saying that the only person that never has never hugged you after a fight or shook your hand was um uh, uh why was her name escaping me the girl you just fought yeah, yeah. Um, ashley yeah yeah, ashley, yeah she, she's the only person right. Is that yep. right. yeah. i have gotten or given i've given respect to every single person i've ever fought yes, right. I, I may not um touch gloves before the fight but i feel like as, as soon as the fight starts it it starts. Yeah. Um, if, if we meet in the center, I'll touch gloves. Can I give you a word of advice? Yeah. You should touch gloves. Um, I will and touch I'm going to tell you what. Because as the shorter fighter usually, always good to be right in <laughs> fucking range. Oh, you got to touch gloves? Okay. Yeah. Oh, good. Now we're pretty close. Yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. fuck you, I'm close to you. <laughs> Come here. Okay. <laughs> Purely selfish reasons. <laughs> Clearly. Purely selfish very, very, reasons. Very. Yeah. All right. I, I guess that once, <laughs> once I'm in... <laughs> we right here. Yeah. <laughs> now we close. <laughs> and, and I came and met you too. Yeah, you're going to come and meet the guy. Especially if you like... 
Yeah. That was great. Yeah. That was yeah, great. That's, that's smart. <laughs> that's smart. <laughs> that's smart. <laughs> I don't know how long you, I'm like you. I'm not a lifelong athlete. You see how you're used to winning? I don't even... So yeah, I have a whole different mindset than you guys. Yeah. No, but yeah, you are a winner. I mean, not it's what you say is true. Like you have, Mm -hmm. you you you've been training. I think there's something that we see in wrestlers, especially Mm -hmm. that have been competing in a very physical sport, Mm -hmm. where you're always working against where is there, what's ranking. You compete a lot, right? Like how often did you used to compete in like Um, high school, right? Oh well. Um, when I was younger, like in the in the younger years, when I um, I used to compete a lot more than I would in high school. So sometimes I would wrestle a full tournament, and then the next day I would go to so I would go to two tournaments a weekend, for the most part. Sometimes I would wrestle in two divisions at at one tournament one day, and then one division the next day. So. What well, weight classes did you used to wrestle at? You fight at one hundred five now, right? Mm-hmm. And do you switch? Do you do 105, 115? Because it's hard yeah, to... Yeah. yeah. You know what? I wish they would put a, one, a 105 pound... Excuse me. I wish they would put a 105 pound division in UFC. I, yeah. I do too. I it's think, exciting. I think so it's too. It's so exciting. We talk about that all the time. Yep. Yeah. You're, one of the You're more exciting real, than the 125 pound guys. Hands over fist. Yeah. Oh, you know, yeah. And, and, and the 125 pound guys are so exciting. Yeah. So yeah. You guys are you, more exciting than them. Oh, yeah. yeah. Because they actually yeah. match up better yeah. size wise because you can have yep. a girl who's let's say the average girl is let's say a buck 30 yeah she might actually cut to 105 mm-hmm. i mean if you just walked if i just plucked That's a girl crazy. out of nowhere at 130 in the whole season i mean i don't, I don't das, think about it like you that. know that girl's training but she's eating yeah. hagen das sometimes definitely yeah and then you clean all that up and she's a 105 yeah because because she could she could diet down like but none of my like, friends that are 105 like, around people that people heavy. don't realize about so fighting never... that mm-hmm. you fucking you there's like losing weight and then cutting weight but yeah, then all you my do friends both yeah yeah, yeah all um, my 105 friends all walk around it's close to their fight weight I've, you, so uh, I see Jillian walks close. I've actually, never seen her heavy ever. Like, I actually used to yeah. walk around close to a fight weight, and I don't do it anymore. Really? Because I remember yes. you did for a little while. Yeah. You were. We yeah. were talking about that. You were trying to stay as close uh-huh. in range as possible. Yeah, but like my my nutritionist is a genius. Okay. So we were talking about that last night. Yeah. Um, when my diet is right, even though I. Um, I eat a lot. I eat like six times a day. Okay. So I will walk at like one twenty three, mm-hmm. and yeah. then um, getting eat dieting down would be it's so easy. Yeah. Because like I can cut things out and I don't even notice. Like my, or just substitute it for something with like less calories. I don't really fo- focus on the calories. She she does all of that for me. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah. And then what awesome. do you get back up to fight day? So fight you day. Come in uh, five, I was one. So I was one, I was one seventeen. Love it. That's yeah. the right way. Yeah. This is the way. I told, so, this is what I tell people that don't fight. Um, if there was no fucking reason you get an advantage, we would never cut weight. There's yeah. a reason we do it. Um, I mean, really, you come from a wrestling sport. People, yeah. There's a perfect weight class, though. Yeah. Like, you probably, maybe your perfect weight class would be 108, but it doesn't exist. Oh, so yeah. It's Actually, well, it does, it does over in Japan. That's super out of weight. Um, that's the perfect division for You know me. what I'm saying? Like, um, there's probably yeah. a perfect weight. Yeah. Like, yeah. 155, like, 105, it's like, well, listen, I have to do that weight, because yeah. the other weight, I'll give up something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But there's, like, a perfect weight that mm-hmm. it all be. Like, for me, my perfect weight would be, like, 149. <laughs> <laughs> Not, uh, 145 hurts. <laughs> I'm so thick. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know. <laughs> yeah, so um actually Jack. for this for this fight so I actually came she in. Is. Yo, what are you dead with? No, I'm just kidding, I'm like yo, I feel I don't like remember, it. But my, Because my she's f- built to be like if she wanted to retire, like when she's forty, she'll be the best power yeah. lifter in her. Yeah, um, um I was actually, yeah. I was actually you know talking I mean? to my um to my strength and conditioning coach. He used to be a um a uh is it is a bodybuilder? Uh he he used to do shows. Figure. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, well, guys don't do yep. figure. Girls do figure. Yeah. Uh, guys do physique. Yes. Yep. Physique. Um, so figure. Get <laughs> I'm going to go do a figure competition. Carrie, how's my figure? It's perfect. perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Should I shave? No. Ugh. Never. I got weak. I shaved my chest hair once and it made me really fucking weak. Yeah, don't do that. I don't know. <laughs> just, it was like opposite Samson. It's not a... 
It's not like, ugh, I don't know. I couldn't move shit. I just... I changed in my older age that, like, when I was younger, I didn't... I didn't understand, like, why guys wouldn't want to shave their chest, and now I'm like... Well, you are from Long Island, to be fair, too. Yeah, I know. You are from Long Island. But now I'm like, Long Island guys are always shaving. No, but now I'm like, fuck that. Like, I'm going to date a fucking high school kid. Like, get out of here. Grow some hair. I know. Yeah. 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 (laughs) I'm with you on that. European style for growing a little bit here. Um, Whatever. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm you know, not. That's. What I mean, if she just likes to like be really natural and walk barefoot in the woods? Well, my problem and <laughs> my problem, I, I get irritated from shaving all the time. So it's like I have mm-hmm. to like there's like I have to keep it and then grow, it just sucks because like yep. I said, it's just the worst. Yep. My skin is so sensitive and it never was. That was another thing. Hit forty. My skin's like old. So I I would sensitive. I would rather. Yeah. yeah. It's, it it's funny that you say that. I would rather walk barefoot in the woods than um keep armpit hair. Oh, I, I, I run barefoot yeah. in the woods. I love yeah. doing going barefoot. I, I like you know, there's like natural ions mm-hmm. that the earth gives exactly. off. Yep. And being barefoot, you uh-huh. know, it's just there's the it's simplest grounding, shit in life yeah. is so underdone. Yeah. yeah. There's, yeah. there's such simple things that mm-hmm. that are very beneficial that we don't and do. people are worried oh, because, oh, it's so dirty, it's so dirty. It's like you touch filth all right. day long. Exactly. Because the earth can clean yeah. itself. Yes. There's a whole ecosystem that... Yeah. Yes. The, the ATM machine that you're touching can't clean itself. So, mm-hmm. you know, there's a difference and people don't look at it in that respect. There, People are too, especially like with the... Okay, so... Driving around and looking at like the signs on the overpass or whatever that says like wash your hands. Never thought I would see that in my life. No. Tell me yeah. it's, it's so like, 1984. I would see somebody it's tell so you to wash your hands. All these yeah. signs, it's like yeah. no, no, no. But like keep your distance. No, no, no. To, to of... wash your like basic cleanliness, you had to be taught how to do. Oh, and now, wash your hands. <laughs> Don't we learn that in kindergarten? You know what I mean? Right. Now, I, I, I was never like the, you know, touch everything and sanitize my hands. I've never been that person. When I leave a bathroom, it's different. That's You don't know people. It's gross. But right. like ATM machines, I've never been that. I'm still not that part. People are like, oh, you're not going to sanitize? I'm like, because I just touched <laughs> germs that like I should be touching so I don't get sick. Mm-hmm. No, I'm not going to. I'm sorry. Like, I need those germs. I right. want the germs. I'm, I, I know that sounds really weird. Those are my good germs. Yes. Those, Those are my friends. Are there yeah, keeps me from getting sick. Off the other germs. Because yeah. I don't really get sick too often. I don't get why. sick. I don't get sick too often. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Thank the gods. I mean, yeah. you know, yeah. I think if you have a good solid immune system, I think we don't talk enough about having being healthy and having a good immune system. Definitely. Yeah. I, I had I this think, conversation yeah. with someone the other day. It's like germs are definitely good for us. Like we need to be exposed to different different things and able to like. To not get sick. Yes, Our entire true. gut is made up of bacteria, yep. essentially Absolutely. germs, right? Yep. Bacteria in our gut that help us function. It's good and bad. So I think there's more to the way bacteria and germs function with us than just let's kill this. Let's mm-hmm. antibacterial. Mm-hmm. I'd rather like wash my hands with soap. Yeah, you're not and supposed to antibacterial. Too so much antibacterial. Yeah, and good. if you notice in the gym, it's always those guys that always are having ringworm. Yeah. It's like always the dude That's who's like true. antibacterial gel every fucking That's day. That's true. I and he's hear- always getting ringworm. I don't know what the science is there, but I'll tell you what my observation is. Being training for 20 years. Uh-huh. Those motherfuckers yeah. always get ringworm the most. Yeah. Right? Staff, they're always getting shit. Yeah. So oh, I, I, I have this special... I, I wash my yeah. fucking thing 18 times a day. It's like, just take a shower. Yes, yeah, yeah. Take a shower yeah. after you train. Take yeah, a shower before you train if yeah. you're gross too. Exactly. Okay. Like, like I, I, I've done this for okay. 20... I've done this my entire life for 20 years. I don't get nearly as many skin diseases as so many other people do. Like, I, I barely ever have gotten ringworm. I haven't gotten that since I was, like, fucking young. I got that once when, when I was a kid. When I first started yeah. training, I used to get exactly. it because my body probably yeah. just wasn't used to it. Yeah, I, I haven't gotten any. Because for 19 that. years, I only smoked weed and uh, you didn't drank train. 40s. Yeah. 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 And, uh, and had ecstasy foam parties. Yeah, again, yeah, hey, yeah. I was I was living that life too for a while. Yeah, that was I mean, listen, that was, I lived the nineties life. Yep, the nineties oh, life. You can never mimic it because there was no cell phones no. then. No. Because if there was Nothing a cell phone, I we did. couldn't do half the shit Nothing we did. Nothing I did was ever recorded. Up top, life was good back then. All we had, and I'm aging the fuck out of myself. You wanted to record us? You're gonna bring the camcorder. My old fights in the gym. You see the old ass shit? Aged the shit out of myself. Someone came with a camcorder like this with a VHS tape. Yeah. You ready for this? 
I no, remember. Like 25, stop it. Yeah, no, you don't. No, exactly. But listen to this. Remember. You're not going to remember this. She's seen it in like the Isle of the 80s. When no, I was in high school. Well, the, the, the camcorder that my mom had was like pretty big. It wasn't fucking huge. Oh, no, like, she was five years like, old. So it was 20 years ago. <laughs> she was five. <laughs> Phones were like. They were full adults. Phones were ridiculous. We were stealing cars. We were. It was, it was crazy. So, all right. So if you look at it, right, you got like. The, the phones, every all the technology we've talked about that everything grew, everything so much bigger, everything. Um, I don't know what we were just talking about that like I had such a good point to it, and I, didn't know. <laughs> I did. Sometimes you just get too. Uh, we were talking about something, and I had the best point to make, and it's gone. It's I'm fucking something with the nineties. Something with the nineties. What were we talking about with the nineties? Oh, 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 oh things, things were that much better, and you can't. You can do whatever. There was no, we we didn't have Facebook. We didn't have MySpace. What we had back then when I was in high school was when AOL first came out. So we had AOL chat rooms. Mm -hmm. Oh, you guys had message boards. Um, I I did like um, the like Yahoo. Okay. Okay. So So we had AOL. Yeah. Mine was right after. Yeah. Yeah. Message boards we had. It was, that was the beginning of the end when like you were, you could be catfished, you could, um, you know, have a girl misrepresent her age. And that's when guys were getting in a lot of trouble because you had, it, we broke out of the industrial age and went so fast into the information age mm-hmm. and people don't realize how much we put ourselves and our and children at risk yeah. and putting them in these environments that were virtual sewers i mean i look and i'm like yo the shit people were saying to each other in these rooms it was fucked up yeah I it was fucked up i met my first one like my the first guy i dated offline was like love it love it aol or some shit i know it was crazy but that's that's sorry but yeah, everything we did back in the day carrie thank the gods we'll stay back in the day <laughs> I say it all the time. I can tell the tales of the shit that I did. And I, t- I talk to people. I If I ever got, or when I get, like, uber famous, I will be the first oh, yeah. person to sit down and just tell everybody, like, yo, this is my story, and I will be the one to tell it because I don't care, and I lived a great life ten times over. Um, mm-hmm. It can't be recorded. There's no proof of it. But yes. there's I, enough I'm people that can say, it. like, oh, yeah. Anything you do is, yeah. like, it's like, yeah, if she so tried awesome. to do anything we did, it would be on a fans only. No like, idea. they would actually try to make money off of the oh, yeah. party. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Thank God. I mean, like, could you imagine if this was, like, back then? Did you used to go and party I just, in the city back then? Well, I was just going to say, could you imagine, like, oh, Carrie Seller got, you know, seen on a train, like, tripping balls on MDNA. And I could see <laughs> she's, like, looked like she was, like, you know, run over five times. And, you know, then you see me walking, like, out the next day and I'm going to, like, do my journalist gig. And like, I'm like, hey, what's up, guys? Like, looking totally <laughs> Man on the stage and exit, yeah. shirt off, 12 hours. Bang, 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 bang. 12 hours. Tripping balls, yeah. sweating. Sound Yo, Factory. We went sound to Factory. That was my second home. Yo, sound. Oh man. Oh, sound I Factory. Didn't do I didn't do Pasha. I was a Sound Factory chick, and I well, pa- yeah, went well, to the tunnel in- once and walked out. It was like this place is not for me. I walked in. I walked out. I went to Webster Hall a couple times. Exit. We used to like exit. Limelight. Limelight was still. Limelight. It was a church. Yeah. It was a church that they turned into okay. a club. Now it's like a shopping mall in Manhattan. That's cool. yeah. It was in Manhattan and yeah. it was like a big rave. It was rave. a huge church, you know, the huge ceilings. They had mm-hmm. full parties. It was a big there. rave. Oh, that's cool. It was parties. a big rave. It was a huge rave. So, did you ever go to raves? I mean, okay. A little bit. I'm so not like one a of, raver. One, one of my friends. Of all right, so one of my <laughs> friends like was the guy that produced all like the biggest raves on Long Island. And he, right before... It was sucked so bad. They were going to bring back, I think it was what, Lust, which is, it was a Valentine's Day rave. They had it every year in the mm-hmm. city and they were going to bring it back when COVID hit. That sucks. I mean, they were going to bring like all the yeah the <coughs> original DJs that like I grew up listening to. I was like, that would have been yeah. really cool. However, I remember going to, they had kind of a revival once back at like this club in Huntington. And just looking at everybody that I, like a couple people I remembered from back in the day still tripping out and looking like, I was like, oh man, maybe I that maybe I don't sometimes. want to be going to this because it's a really fucked up look. Right, yeah. right, yeah. The coolest kid <laughs> when I was growing up. Would you think up. you look normal? Right. You don't. Um, I actually. What it, I think that it sucks that like all like the everything was shut down because I had just gotten into like going to festivals. Like, <laughs> I I had just got into like a festival like some a rave and. Fucking! I went to a phone party like last year. Did so you like, Firefly festival festival something like that? What? Or Firefly or something like that? There were so many good festivals. Well, so, can I, I, I interrupt one? You're so good. 
I'm such okay. a cheerleader. <laughs> so, Lisa, that. I want to switch it up and ask you about something else. <laughs> so you had said you had a vision quest, a psychedelic experience. I want to hear about it. Do you want to share? I love to, you know, I love talking about the way our mind works. Okay. I think fighting is the most psychedelic experience. Okay. Personally, I think it's crazy because I also haven't competed mm -hmm. as much as you. So mm -hmm. it's probably like normalized in your mind. Yeah. For me, so, I'm a little more out there, but I'd love to yeah. hear about like your psychedelic experience because obviously it's powerful. So, you mentioned it if you want to. Yeah. <laughs> um, what exactly do you want to know? Um, well, first, what'd you take? Okay, so actually, th there are two. These are two completely different topics. So, um, I have psychedelic experiences, and that I could that I could share, and then I also have um, my vision quest, which I went on completely sober. Okay. Um, I didn't eat for two days, so I was just out in the woods, and all I this was, is the what? Yep, I I drank water, um, and I went out with with questions. Uh, there was like 16 different questions that I had um, in every eight direction, in all eight directions, um, where I would go sit, um, look at something one way, and then physically even turn around and look at it the other way. I wanted to find different things within myself. I wanted to find who I am, what I'm actually like here for, like what what I want to do with my life. And when did you do this? Um, what fight wise, like put it in frames of before. <laughs> like I, I think al of it almost as soon <coughs> as COVID happened. As soon as COVID happened. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then about since like that, that March. Um, yes, as soon as things started. And getting then you had two fights since that. Yep. Okay, so it started off. You went and mm -hmm. had a vision quest. Mm -hmm. fasted, Smart then. It's yep. very odinic. Mm -hmm. you know, yep. It, it was actually at the beginning of my fight camp with Lindsay. Yeah. The very you know, started that way. Yeah. What I <coughs> was equating the quarantine as, and I was telling a lot of people, like we were talking about it, that mm -hmm. I've actually had a really great, great 2020. My quarantine was fucking fantastic. Like I feel like I was built for this yeah. forever, sure. and it made me learn a lot about myself. Mm -hmm. So I can equate that that like a lot of people should have taken something out of it. And then to go one step further and do a vision quest during it. Yeah. Talk more about yeah. that, please. Um, <laughs> I've really used this time. Like I identified early on that either, so my work was the first thing to be shut down. I work with special needs students at an elementary school. Um, I realized that things were very serious as soon as, um, you know, we got shut down. And I'm a very empathic person. I can take on the energy of everything that is going on around me. I can take it in, understand it. Um, and early on, I started just like really trying to understand what was going on and that did nothing but bad stuff for me. Mm. I realized that I needed to shut the world out and really just figure out what I could do to better myself and better the people around me and the outreach that I have. So early on, I went... Just out, <laughs> I, I figured that I either I could sink or I could thrive during mm. this time, and I chose that I was going to thrive. That was the only option that I had. Um, so one of the first things that I did was I went on a vision quest. Love it. And what did you take away from that experience? Uh, so you went, you went to the woods, mm -hmm. right? Two days you fasted. Mm -hmm. You asked all these questions. Mm -hmm. Okay. You asked all these questions. Yep, all, all by myself. I didn't. Did you have like a tent or anything? What? Did you do a tent or anything? I did have a tent. Okay. Um, I made a fire by myself. I Amazing. actually brought out a bow drill. I didn't use I the bow it. drill to do the fire. I I used some other things. Okay. But, yeah. yeah. But that's cool. So you like it was like you surviving. You think you want to do it that way, but yeah. the truth is, yeah. so it was like I almost do like that stuff. I yeah. bring regular matches and stuff. Yeah, like, like, like yeah, I, I, I still built, I still built the fire. You built the fire. Yeah, yeah, it's I, hard enough. I, I built like the like little like a uh, you know like TV little thing. For, formation yeah, awesome. correctly. Yeah. I I got all like the tinder like all mm -hmm. the stuff to like put inside of it. I just played it differently. No <laughs> Yeah, it's hard enough that way anyway. Go, yeah. So, so it's so almost like going then, back to like a primitive. Yeah. You know, for two exactly, days and yeah. really learning as much as you can about yourself. I love that. Yeah. I love, I love that. it. And then you did eight directions, eight dimensions, yeah. the way you set up your circle. Yeah. Right? And then what did you take away? Did that send you then on this, like, martial quest again? Yeah. So it was weird, like, going out there. Um, for myself, anyway, I could, I could feel myself as soon as I got out there alone. Your camera just shut off. 
Do you want to pause it? Because you can. No, no, okay. No, no, okay. No, no, Just letting you know. Um, you could pause that. I've been doing. I've been playing around with my garage band, so I'm not just. See, like I heard it. I was like, wait, wait, wait. Something just happened. <laughs> we need yeah. to address it now. Um, <laughs> Love it. So, um, it Vision Quest. Quest. Okay. What you took out of it. So, Fight Mar Marshall Journey after. Like you like uh, what you took out of it after. Did you like go on a Marshall? Do your Marshall? Yeah, I went on this Marshall Journey. Okay. Right? So, she won this title, right? Mm -hmm. was, yeah. Yeah. It seems like the start. Like so, of the heroic journey process, um, right, where you get... All of the eight directions, I guess, have different aspects about them. All, all of the directions, I guess they kind of symbolically, like, stand for different things. So there's different questions and different parts of life that I would look at at, at each point. And I would look at both in the bad and in the good light. I needed to, um... Um... Yeah, so... Oh, where was... Before. Okay. So as soon as I got out there, um, I could kind of feel myself like going through all the different stages of my life that I've gone through already leading up to that point. So it was a, very, in that aspect, it was a very, very psychedelic experience. I, um, I rewrote all of my past traumas within mm -hmm. probably the first two hours that I was out there. Wow. <laughs> you went through everything real quick. That happens yeah. sometimes. Yeah, that's good though. I yeah, because ev everything was just hitting me right away. Um, uh, cause I, I knew there was a lot of other things that I wanted to focus on. So all of the internal stuff. Also, I, I'm not, I don't have a big ego. Mm. I, I can kind of let, I, I process things very, very mm. well. Um, so the fact that my ego was attacking me right away and I just kind of worked through it. I cried things out. I did exactly what I had to do. I looked at all the, the, the things that are still bogging me down, still holding me down and looked at it from all right, here's the problem. I'm going to look at it from this aspect, this aspect, this aspect. Which one's the best one? Mm. That's how I'm going to live by it. Mm. And um, really just went through that. And then I figured out, like, within looking in the different eight directions, what is for me. And I also did some whittling wood while I was out there and stuff. So. Nice. Yeah. That's awesome. There's something so powerful and so transformative about being in connection with nature. Mm. And, you know, some of the most psychedelic yep. experiences I've had in my life are without any hallucinogenic drugs. Um, the fasting, so the, the, when you do long fasts, especially if you do, I once did three days no water, and that at the last day, I have a journal, and I remember uh -huh. nothing of what I wrote down. So That's smart that you wrote it down, though. Yeah. yeah. So, I, I don't even know how I wrote it if I don't remember I, it, but I don't yeah. remember it. I, I and, journaled uh, everything, too. Um, I See? Yeah. Uh, I knew you guys were going to buy the same I said that last night. same spiritual bloodline. I said last night that to her, you guys are going to get along the same spiritual well. Oh, I, well, I know you so, both. So I knew that you guys would. Yeah. So I, I think that what psychedelics have taught me the best, um, and, and what I actually come to the I don't know. Um, it's all right. Um, Yo, so, video's long. I mean, it's yeah, long video. Yeah. yeah at least it's, yeah. See what I'm saying about yeah. technology? So I, I think that what psychedelics nice. have taught me the most is how to work through my problems sober. Yeah. So the, the thinking that happens while I'm in, on psychedelics, that I, I've learned how to transfer that over to being sober. And that's why I don't really have a huge ego. I can kind of just think things out, be very logical about it. And, I like that. Yeah. Well, I think one of the most powerful things about taking hallucinogenic drugs is the way it shuffles your ego around mm -hmm. in the hierarchy of yourself mm -hmm. like people are like oh i don't have any ego well i don't know if i didn't have any ego i probably wouldn't wake up in the morning and i wouldn't want to train i wouldn't want right. to get laid i wouldn't want to do anything yeah i have no ego yeah. i mean what do you want to do today yeah Good. like like i, I so I, I need some ego but exactly, it can't yeah. be in control or yep. else that motherfucker takes me all kinds of places I don't want to yep. go. Yep, exactly, yeah. You know, he'll take all kinds of places because your ego is a bad decision maker. Yeah. So you got to be yeah. careful. So you put your ego in its place. Yep. Mm -hmm. So your ego is not in charge. Yep. I, if I, you I have know. no ego, why would you do anything? Exactly. So you, have, you have to have a little ego. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, know when, I know when it's time for like my ego to be like... But there can also be times yeah. where your ego is like last. Yeah. So, so far exactly. down the list that you're like, I have no ego. Yeah. He's last place. Sure. Before I see that guy, 
Yeah, I got all this. He's not even on the list. Exactly. He's last place. Yep, got a lot more stuff to take care of. Especially when you're on and psychedelics matters. does that. It puts your ego almost to nothing. It does. It puts him almost to the bottom of right? Mm-hmm. And then you can think about that sober. Be like, oh, what was it like when I when my ego was mm-hmm. not steering the ship? Mm-hmm. When was yep. my ego not controlling the car? <laughs> 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 yep. Um, so, so as soon as my ego is not steering, not, is not controlling the car, that's that's when my life is going fucking the best. Mm, yeah. Um, yeah. I use meditation a lot. Mm. Um, like I said before, my fight, I meditated. I actually meditated that day like three, four times. Mm. Yeah. Now you Did said you, you find. Sorry. <laughs> We're both like, who goes first? You said you find yourself, uh, you find meditation in different things, not mm-hmm. just like, you know, sitting within yourself, mm-hmm. like drawing and different ways of doing it. I yeah. find so, yeah. so many things meditative and yeah. therapeutic that most people are like, how? Like, yeah. Uh, so, so, so I find journaling, I, journaling very meditative, mm-hmm. very, um, draw, um, writing poems mm. so i was actually you're like a samurai yeah so i, I was going back poetry and I, <laughs> power yeah yep i was going back and i was reading through my poems that i was writing the week leading up to my fight and i didn't even remember writing some of them and they were so powerful mm. i'm like the person who wrote this was feeling something oh yeah like mm. it was it, it's actually you can be a different person hold on can we talk about all the emotions that the fight brings up yeah I feel like that fight week, mm. every fucking emotion, oh my God. all the feels, yeah. oh yeah. my God. Yep. Yo, fight week is like every emotion. It's it like... It is. Um, so I I just... It, I went. I was on a roller coaster. Before, <laughs> I was just going to say, and it sounds like what? We figured it out the before I even started my bath. Like, shit was just flying at me like I was stressed about stuff like I didn't know where I was gonna I didn't I didn't know where I was gonna be staying like all this stuff I have what am I gonna eat after yeah yeah like, yeah she's like that was like number two on my mind what am I gonna eat after yeah I weigh in yeah. now what and, and that's like, when I'm gonna be starving to I, death I came in heavier than I I came in heavier than <laughs> <laughs> I give it a heavier than I ever have, so I, w- I was one seventeen. But I had already drank a gallon that day. I had already mm-hmm. eaten eight pounds. A gallon of water was eight pounds. Right, I, I had already eaten like three times that day. So like, whatever. I, I got down to like one thirteen before I started my cut, so it, it wasn't that bad. Um, but I was just kind of sp- figure all of that stuff out right away. I talked shit out with my coach actually, both my coaches. Mm. Um, I went in there and cried to them. Would you do like a pound an hour? <laughs> Um, you started your cut pound an hour. What do you uh, like? Do you like baths? Do you like, do you like I, I like baths and, and wraps. And and wraps. Yep. Now, into baths and wraps. As a female, I can definitely identify with the going crying it out with them. Like, if you need to get something out, like, that is really important. Mm-hmm. I don't know how guys are, but, like, I am a we super... We don't do that. Okay, so now I'm a super crier. Not, like, I don't... If I No, if there's something, like, that's bothering me and I don't realize it, like, I'll cry at a fucking commercial. Like, I'm like, oh, I can't Yeah, because, like, I, I didn't realize what was, like, what was bothering me. Um, it's insane. I realized that at, at this point, like... And in big moments, a lot of times in my life, I would I would choke. Yeah. So, um, it was a huge moment. There's a lot of um, emotions coming, and it was proving something to myself. Mm-hmm. So I, I really had to like talk this out with my coaches. Like, <laughs> I don't know. If every worry in the world was coming up. I wrote literally seven pages in my journal just about how. I was upset about one thing, and I didn't understand why that upset me so much. And then, <laughs> I, just for seven pages into the conclusion of it, I came to the to I am afraid of success. So, talked about that. That's and my then, biggest fear. Yep, and I, and I was like, I am afraid of being who I know mm-hmm. I I meant to be. I know that I'm meant for greatness. I've known this since I was young. I don't know where along the journey, because at five, nobody could fucking tell me no. Mm-hmm. I. If, if I wanted something, I would go and do it. Um, somewhere along the journey, fear, there, there's, there's this fear of being this person that I know that mm-hmm. I am. And I had to kind of fucking get rid of it. <laughs> you do. Yeah. You do because, you know, I think that, like, it's almost getting back to that, like, young, 
you, that you think you that you're Definitely. not afraid of anything yep. and you know no fucks given why should you like it took me a long time to get to where I'm not like I don't care Ooh, I don't care at my legs I guess I'm hungry I don't care what people think it takes mm-hmm. me it took me a long time to be able to say what I want and not go oh, like fuck like no no this is my opinion and it matters so I'm gonna say it regardless if you like it or not yep. but I was very 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 afraid of success and I, we were talking about last night that it took me till being an MMA journalist to even be able to like go out by myself I was mm-hmm. the first time I walked into a fight by myself I was like oh my god it was so socially awkward yep. I didn't know what to do I got yep. so yep. high it was the only thing I think could think of doing I just got <laughs> so high I didn't even know where I was going like I, I, I forget who I saw it. Alicia I, I can't remember her last name at the moment and I ran into her and I'm like I don't even know where I am and she's like you're in the garden. I'm like, oh, like, I know I I'm in the garden. <laughs> I know uh, my name's Carrie. It's funny. <laughs> it was hysterical. <laughs> oh, I think back to Alicia. So you you were really thoughtful, right, with your coach. And she makes this long-ass thing out, you know, and, and tells her how she feels. And, and uh, you asked if that's common for guys. Mm-hmm. First of all, do I want to do that? For, yes, I do want to do that. And I'm sure that thought's terrifying for a guy like Ray Longo. So I can't even get <laughs> I close to that. To him and start crying. I can't even get close <laughs> to that because before I can even get to that point to write a letter, motherfuckers would be busting my balls. They'd smack the pen out of my hand. They'd be like, that shit ain't going to work. They'd be, I wouldn't even get a chance to write this poem. They'd be clouded. I'm the only one. Have you ever seen someone in the dressing room? Get their balls busted, like unmercifully. <laughs> no. Like, no. I mean unmercifully. Like, I'm in the dressing yeah, no. room, and my own team, I throw, I do something, and a dude on my own team is like, man, well, that's just never going to work. <laughs> like, that oh, my God, no. Like, can you imagine being in a dressing room, and you're doing some shit, and your coach is like, not your coach. My coach wouldn't say that, but a guy on my team is yeah. like, that shit ain't going to work. Oh I'd be my like, God. I'm like, you fat fuck. <laughs> that, uh, you wait, I go to check in. You know, fight for check in. And I go up, and the dude's like, Who's your fighter? I'm like, I'm a fighter. He's like, No, he really pops. Who's your fighter? I'm like, You got <laughs> I'm like, Are you for real now? Yeah, I'm getting my ball but everywhere. It's so funny. I have to laugh at myself. That's it's funny. like, it, That's like what keeps my ego. I'm like, Yo, it's so preposterous. I'm like, Laughing at myself. I'm like, Please just look my name up. I'm like, my opponent's right in back of me, fucking dying hysterically. I'm like, just, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> my, my, my... Eric Pico is in front of me. He's like, oh, Eric, who the fuck are you? Who's your, who's your fighter? Oh, um, Ray Longo. That's my fighter. Ray, you want to jump in there? <laughs> Maybe I should go fucking fight fights and then I could say I'm a fucking fighter. I guess I don't have a pro fight. <laughs> okay, don't mind me. I'm off on a my corners. I'm in my own dimension now. <laughs> I'm in the manual zone now. You're in the I'm in the manual zone. zone because in my fight, I didn't even know that the crowd was there. That's I thought that was in my head. I thought I was hallucinating. I might still be. I got sometimes okay. I got it. But I might be. You know, sometimes I think, you know, you like the Odinic mysteries. And Odin is the many, mm-hmm. has many aspects. Mm-hmm. Almost every aspect. The All Father mm-hmm. is everything, the entire universe, just mm-hmm. in Odin's head. He needs to explore yeah. the whole universe yeah. in every aspect, as because uh, his pantheon, and he's the god of transformational experience, mm-hmm. life, death, rebirth, being those yeah. most powerful yeah. ones. So sometimes I wonder, is it just all in Odin's head? I, I mean. All in the head maybe. of the gods. Yeah, it's it's yeah. all of like our existence. Not maybe not really, like it's all of our existence just like in the imagination of the gods. Oh, it very well. Is there some be. cosmic being and we're like his gut bacteria? <laughs> like he created this whole thing. We wind up being the gut bacteria of yeah. his universe and we yeah. think we're really important. Yeah. We uh, we I feel like we're, we're like the, the universe's expression of life. Like, like the gods, ex- the gods would be like the universe. Like, it, it's all kind of, I, I really know how to The gods it. are energetic representations yes. of different energies expressed in the universe. Exactly. Yep. So and, there's an energy that when it coagulates into a dense form, we call that love. Yep. There's an energy we call, yep. right? 
uh, envy. There's an energy. There's all these different energies that exist in the universe as these places and the gods, mm -hmm. what we call the gods, are ways we can connect as yeah. very small spiritual beings. An expression of that, yeah. yeah. You, but the flesh is something so, and as a fighter, listen, all that fucking spiritual shit exactly. the Buddhists do, yeah. there's nothing like pressing flesh. Yeah. Like, the power exchange from contact is super powerful. Yeah. And that's one of the things I feel I miss yeah. uh, like in New York more than you, but you know all the Buddhist monks they could be like I meditate I'm mindful in this okay now do it when I'm punching you in the face mm. now can we do it when and for me not being used to that all the time is yeah. so powerful um, so like being mind like that practice yeah. this this last fight was actually and in this incarnation <laughs> the only way we get the flesh mm. yeah you know this yeah. shit it's it it gives you a different feel yeah when you exchange energies it's yeah. not like being astral. Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I, th I think that this fight was actually the first time that I've ever been able to actually in the cage um, be very mindful in the moment, be very present. Did you see mm. yourself in um, person almost? How was your experience there? Because there was a couple points and almost as look, observing and thinking about it. You just looked like you were having such a good time. That yeah. She yeah, had a little so spin at one point looking at the action slightly outside and then back in. I don't know. That's what I've seen as the... Mm -hmm. As like... I, I'm very, I'm very I was like... I'm very good with energy and I'm very good at understanding it and where... Um, I don't know my, what my opponent's doing and what... You feel her energy? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, I very feel, aware. We were talking yes, about it, that. In if any, usually if someone is thinking about shooting, I know. Like yeah. about five seconds before they're going to yeah, shoot. Yeah, I, you're very aware. Like, oh, well, they're, they're thinking. I mean, I'm, I'm like, oh, they're thinking about shooting right now. It, it's not even like they're level changing yet. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I I just know. There's a tell from, yeah. from mm -hmm. the thousands of hours you yeah. put in. Yeah. Um, you know, like, especially uh, from wrestling. You, you ever of, read, yeah. um, I think it's Outliers, and they study like baseball players, and they're like, you can't make the reaction fast enough to actually mm -hmm. respond to it. You're responding to cues mm -hmm. way before there's actually the cue. Yep. Mm -hmm. the, actually, the movement is yeah. too fast for you to read, but there's all these cues. Mm -hmm. You're like, they're thinking about it. There's mm -hmm. all these cues. And consciousness, I don't think it's just our brain, no. it's this whole field. Yep. And you're feeling all these subtle cues in every move. Yep. yep. Every um, shift so, of energy. Actually, last time I rolled with my coach, it, it was he he complimented my creativity more than anything. Mm. And but what I realized that I was doing, I was actually I was reading all of the cues every single time. Like, oh, he's he's shifting his hip this way. You know, he's thinking about going over here. This is what he's gonna do. I I know the moves that he usually hits. Mm -hmm. So. I'm starting to be able to pick up on things way before, just because of the tiny cues. Yeah. No, it, it's not even like he's like, it helps me be more creative. I'm, I'm much yeah. more in tune with energy. It might be too late when the big... It's not like he's telegraphing or projecting it too much. But. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, have you... So, I know it's annoying to have this question asked. I find it the most annoying. What's next? Right, like, are you, are you going to defend the title there? There's no 105 pound division in UFC. Right. So you um, have several options. So right? so you could go up to 115. Right. And try to go on contender series. Right. Or something like that. Right. Right, and again, the UFC is a 115, yeah. but you be given up all sides. Or you defend your belt in Invicta. Yep. I think that I will invict I, I will um defend my belt in Invicta, but I have um a, I have another idea of what I would like to do. Oh I there's need, also Japan, that's right. Um Japan. I with, within Invicta that I need yeah. to talk over with uh Shannon. I, I love Shannon. Um but I have another idea of something that I could do within Invicta and I think that it'd be very exciting. So I don't really wanna talk about that until it's actually like you know yeah yeah okay but keep that on the wraps we can yeah. Wraps, yeah. But yeah. yeah we can talk about it we can talk about it off camera i was gonna say i know we'll talk about that yeah. off camera yeah at least she has a lot of big things in the works anyway and i was talking to her last night about what she can do you know even outside of fighting with okay. the tattoos she's got like she's a shoe in but she's a shoe in for a She's a shoe in for tattoo modeling, and right now, like Inked Magazine is has 
put a lot of fighters on their in their magazines. You have great so. artwork. Thank you. Yeah, I love the artwork. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. And I'm yeah. telling you, I like to get the God of Shiva for destruction. Yes. Yeah. You know, I think. I mean, it's important to recognize those energies that you want to cultivate. Mm -hmm. And however we could get to those energies, mm -hmm. yeah. it's not always through. I, and I, I always, well, I have a tattoo of the rune of protection. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Would you? Oh, yeah. August. Yeah, yeah. That's good. Thank you. Yeah. It, my hands don't really take ink well, so mm. like it's not that good. Yeah, I mean, have to you go know, there is, there is a historical precedent for that, mm -hmm. even in the sagas, to tattoo your hands does have a precedent. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and sometimes, yeah, it's better that if it comes off on the hand. Yeah. It might be that it has a, a limited use, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the actual use of the rune, even yeah. like I noticed with the actual wood rune, it, once it breaks. Mm -hmm. Oh, that and then she's done. I, I didn't even my, think about it like that. That's okay. it. And we have to and then you have yeah. to ceremonially bury it. Yeah. You have to See, like I am huge into burying yeah. things you know when I'm done with them. Sacrifice. You have to so yeah. in when you read the the Havamal and mm -hmm. all the different like sagas, when you read all the different sagas, there's there's secret okay. things in there about a few things. Some about the cosmos, mm -hmm. different galaxies, yeah. Odin's eye, that's the Helix yeah. Nebula. So the places that the original God's energy came from. We don't know if it's extraterrestrial in origin, yep. especially yeah. since those galaxies are very close to us. That are, yeah. mm -hmm. And then there's also the natural phenomenon they talk about. Thor talks about mm -hmm. the magnetic field. Mm -hmm. Earth has a magnetic field that protects us from mm -hmm. radiation. And Thor's story is all about that. You have to complete a circuit to have that yep. uh, magnetic field. So they, there's a lot of like uh, cosmic mysteries in there, but also... Yeah, how the, the spiritual mysteries are deep in there. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess in the Bible, I guess for the guys that study Kabbalah would be similar. Yeah. Well, with the tree of life, I guess that's... Well, we were talking about that the last time, and I was saying that, because that's something I can identify with, is like the biblical sense of a lot of things. But, stuff, yeah. but I do know that's enough about read. other... I do know enough about other um, cultures to at least be able to talk about them. Yeah. John's taught me a lot about the Viking uh, oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. which I didn't know anything about. I just about. identify so strongly with... Uh, but I've always identified with goddesses. Yeah. Goddesses have been like a big I love energy for me. Um, yeah. I have like a, a tarot deck that's a um, uh, goddess deck. Yes. I have the uh, book of goddesses in my, okay. somewhere in my house. I have a whole bunch. I love goddesses. Mm -hmm. um, I try to... Well, I love that. I mean, you have Freya. Thank so what you. Yeah. Are we, for you, the two goddesses you have tattooed I on have you. Freya, Freya yeah. and And then I also Shiva. have Ganesh, so... And you have Ganesh. Yep. Um, I love goddesses and matriarchy and everything. So, you know, I but, think that... Um, I'm a historian. Mm -hmm. uh, my specialty is ancient Rome, but if you look at it historically, Rome's a patriarchy, but mm -hmm. I think that there is a lot of precedent for matriarchies, uh -huh. but not given powerful praise in the literature. Mm -hmm. And also, I was talking about this uh, with Kerry one day in the Vikings. For the Vikings, there's a lot of evidence, mm -hmm. tons of historical evidence, like tons now, uh -huh. of Viking warrior women being buried, uh -huh. you know, with high honors. Yeah. And even, see, they believed like, you could come back after death yeah. and help out too. Yeah. So they would put, like, so yeah. if you were one of those, you were even a higher rank than, mm -hmm. like, a great warrior. You were... Yep. meant to come back and help. And there's a lot of females yep. that they find in that position. Sarmatia, even the Romans, they don't like to give this credit in the sources. But in ancient Rome, if you were an auxiliary, let's say you were a Sarmatian, like with the Amazons, what they call, what the Greeks call Amazons, mm -hmm. probably Sarmatian cavalry, mm -hmm. uh, and a bowman, an archer, right? Yeah. And if you came across them, the Romans make them just do their thing. So yeah. if you have this whole contingent of female archers, that's what you rock on with, with Rome. Like, they're like, yeah, yeah that's our contingent of female archers. Do you? Mm -hmm. Right? And then, But they don't give this a lot of credit in the sources. But there's a huge amount of yeah. source material for powerful female warriors. And I think pre-industrial, uh, pre-agricultural revolution, there was probably a lot of matriarchal-based mm -hmm. society. Yeah, and, and I think that a big a big part of, like, matriarchal, a lot of people would will think of it as just, like, women just being in power and just being women. No, that's that's not exact. That's not what it is. Mm -hmm. It would... It's back to a time when men and women were both equally. Mm -hmm. they, they were seen as equals. Growing up, you guys were taught, this is what women, this, this is men, we all have our part. Like, we yeah. are all equal. 
and um, but perhaps in different roles depending right, exactly. on the time yeah. in their life exactly too. yeah yep. because there's evidence that and, and women would go through different cycles yeah yeah uh, of what they would do so when you were over 40 yeah you go fight yeah you know, I kind of feel like that's what we're coming wrong. back to though because women have been like with the you know the uh, feminist movement uh, company leggings so yep. I'm not the only one that wears all the girly shit I, I have those exact same leggings and white I'm not the only one that wears all the girly shit white and white my, mine are white and pink so her, yeah. hers are like hers are even like mine are white and pink so I'll like the, yeah the major I love the tray the major difference in training from when I was younger to now is the gear. That's know. the main. It's like this. Like, like, yeah. yeah. We did it. Yo, we were training in Speedos. Fucking swear to God. We were like, <laughs> we were at Henzo's training, like no gi training was in Speedos. That's wild. And no shirt. What? Yo, it was the worst thing you've ever seen. That was normal. It was the worst thing you've Brazilians ever seen. Brazilians don't give a shit. They were training as, look at those old Luke delivery fights. They fought in Speedos on the beach. And they thought that shit was cool in the gym. It wasn't cool, but I still did it. Storm come on. It, was it wasn't cool. You're so Okay, funny. so we were talking about oh, the, the emasculation of men. The, well, the and, and matriarchal society. Yes, so there's a big difference I feel between. Like, I feel like what's going to happen, of like where we're evolving to, is where we're going to find that balance mm -hmm. again. Yeah. Between the masculine and feminine, because yeah. you can't have it one way or the other. I mean, yeah. clearly, we, we see what's going on with. Yeah. I, I, I'm not trying to bring it into politics, but we see a very weird divide with how the women are and how the men are. Uh -huh. At least I can say that because you're seeing it very like it's there. And yeah. you know, in yeah. my own perspective, yeah. I think that you can be feminine without having uh -huh. to degrade masculine. Exactly. I agree. Ever, I think that happens yeah. sometimes. I notice it with like my younger guys I trained. I mean, my generation kind of, I was lucky that mm -hmm. I'm a little past that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh -huh. yeah, there's definitely, I feel like there's some emasculation, but uh, I wanted you, you want to talk about, right? Matriarchy. And oh, yeah. yeah. But I, I was going to say that um, I also agree that everyone is feminine and everyone is masculine. Like, yeah. we, I don't know, I, I, Everyone needs to be feminine and masculine. I'm a very masculine woman. Like Me I too. I do a lot of things that most men women would, don't identify with. Exactly. Yeah. But biologically, exactly. we're women and right. we're very girly and too at the same time. I mean, that's all I feminine. Yeah, exactly. We're very feminine. As, I, as much as we're masculine and we have masculine right. like interests, right. we're feminine. And, and as much as um, I want mm -hmm. everything equal, like like a matriarchal society, like I do still I identify with and understand that we all there are their roles absolutely and i feel like as a woman home heart and heart mm -hmm. are very much still like in, important in, and important yeah. yes like yeah. I, I can still be a strong independent woman who is going out and winning your all titles mm -hmm. but at the end of the day take care of the family and exactly yeah yep have and children yeah. and take care of your home yeah. now i think that your extended family yeah be yeah. Are you close Which to your is family? Yes, very yeah. close so, to your family. But I think your so family, about, like, like you your fight family like, and people that fight are Fight family's like, important. Yes. Even yeah, your friends like family. family. Like, like Tabitha. Oh my god. She Love her. Yeah, I can't even hear. I'm so excited. Yeah, yeah, it's it's very that. important. Having sisterhood is super important. Yes. And guys for having guys to have. I wish I was seeing more sisterhood. I think sometimes. Yeah. I, I don't you're know. Okay, listen. To. I don't so know if this you're is. Starting to, you you're starting to and you don't even realize it. No, you're starting to and you just don't see it because okay. I'm seeing it hardcore. I, I, I agree with that. Bigger so, than ever. So I Especially have, over the human trafficking. Women yes. are rising up. So I, I've started to immerse myself into several different communities. I've started to put myself out there as who I am. And within every single community, I have found so many women mm -hmm. that support me for what I'm doing, and then I support them for what they're doing within the martial arts community, within the That's spiritual great. community, within the um, YouTube community, with within al almost every mm -hmm. community that I'm in. There are women. Journalism. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would love to get it to get into. You know, my sister-in-law has her master's in journalism from Columbia. That's crazy. I didn't know that. Yeah, I wish we'd do some more writing. But, uh, there's nothing, you know, I don't know. There's no the money. Guy's a badass, I'm sorry, I don't want to cool. sound like a dick, but there's no money. I don't know, I love it. There's no well, money in power. No money no in, money in journalism. journalism. Yeah. I know, it sucks. It's, well, it's not real anymore. Yeah, there's now no, she found that out with $100,000. There is no real <laughs> journalism out there. There's no, you don't, there's no written stuff. There is no, everything's going to be paid for. It's not. I think there's a room for it, but you have to do it on your own. 
Well, you're even, never going to get a job in journalism like you well, used to. I be. wouldn't, but um, certainly not me. But uh, there's no, certainly. even though there's no, there, it's very hard to do it on your own. Although I found ways to, you know, to make money. We talked about that last night. Mm -hmm. There are so many other ways yeah. to do it that you don't have to make money through it, your passion. You can still mm -hmm. do what you love, mm -hmm. make money other ways, and still be able to do what you love. Yeah. Well, I want to bring it back. You're doing something super badass, right? You've just been traveling around. Mm -hmm. Right, you just yeah. road tripping. You're the road warrior yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us about that. How's that been? I saw yeah. you were in Boston a couple days yeah. ago. Yeah, I went to Salem. I went to Boston. Like, a, yeah. I, I don't know, Salem, the witches, all that stuff. Like, and just by yourself, just rocking out. Yeah, my mom went for the first... Seeing with friends along the way. So, like, my mom went for the first couple of days. Um, I, We've always talked about a girl trip. And so she went for the first couple of days, and we parted ways, and went back to Salem for, for a bit, and... Uh, we went. We went to Boston. Oh, that was that was nice. Oh, nice. So, um, yeah. Fucking. Now you're in New York. Now, now I'm in New York. You got some training after this. You yeah. Choke. I don't yeah. know if I want her to choke me yeah. or. Now, no, now, now I just choke both choke of me us. Okay. Choke both of us. Uh, yeah. It's for your that fun flu choke. Now I'm on the road, and I think I'm gonna go all month. And nice. training isn't my number one priority at the moment. It's. I'm going to have times when it's going to be like just another vision quest. I really want to be with within myself. I'm looking to start other chapters of my life and uh, just kind of figure things out. So like, you got to consolidate your games. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, all that yeah. accumulation of energy, now you have to you know, explore all that that you gained, right? Because mm -hmm. it's probably, does it seem like the last, let's say, six, seven months went by really quick for you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because you went from right COVID, shut everything down for a minute, but you guys rocked fight, out. Fight. It still affects fight. things in your life. Dude, dude, all, two all, fights. All my, two all my life has been, in 2020, has been training for fights and spiritual. So, Which is awesome. How much better so, could that be? And, and 2020 and vision. Yeah. Leap yeah. year. Quantum leap. Yep. 2020 is great. So for I, I, I think there's more coming, too. We were talking about that yeah. last night. A lot I, more coming. Yeah. I've been this reading. I've been, second chapter is going to be I've been lit. manifesting. I've been following yeah. the moon cycles this year. Mm -hmm. Like, I've been doing... Oh, my God. <laughs> Hold on. Wait. Hold on. Stop. <laughs> I've been following this year the lunar cycles. It's insane. More yeah. closely than I have... At least in the last decade. I don't know why. What's yeah. going on this year? The moon's been beautiful. Crazy. I did, and I've been doing a ritual for every moon. Me too. Hunter yeah. moon. And we got two moons. We got one on Halloween. We saw one on Halloween. Yeah, so it's yeah. a blue moon and yeah. uh, what is that? Uh, Harvest moon? No. Har no it's the first like, time, the first time yeah. that... Um, Hunter's moon was the October yeah, 1st. Yeah, it was the Harvest moon and the... That was a great was looking... Moon. That was a great looking moon. No, it is the harvest. It's it's the blue moon, and I forget. We'll look it up anyway. So, it's hunting season. So, it's hunting season, baby. Mm -hmm. Right, October. The hunters become the hunters. <laughs> Go on. Um, I didn't realize that it was a full moon. One of, one of the full moons this, this year. Mm -hmm. And for the first night of it, so that, since the last 24 hours, I was reading um, Think, Think and Grow Rich. And I was just like... I, 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 was, I was visualizing a bunch of different things that would be so cool to have in my life. And starting in the morning, I started getting a bunch of those opportunities. Mm. And I looked at the moon and I was like, holy fuck. Mm. I didn't even mean to do this. But. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so people I, think I'm, I'm like hokey like sometimes. Too. I'm a big fan of books that are like that. Go on. So people think I'm hokey sometimes. But I'm going to explain something. Let me know if this makes sense. If, if mm -hmm. you, how you feel about it. Everything's energy, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Everything's yeah. energy. And... We can see that the energy of certain objects influence other things. Mm -hmm. So you can see that the energy of the moon influences something like the tides. Absolutely. Yeah. Why? Because water is something a little less dense than, mm -hmm. let's say, rock. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, energy, something way less dense than water. Mm -hmm. How is that influenced by something like the lunar energy? Mm -hmm. So the energy that's playing off... And someone will say there's no science to, like, when, when you'll say, oh, that power, energy of the moon, I felt, mm -hmm. was powerful. And they're like, oh, that's, that's hokey, right? Oh, yeah, but that same person will turn around and when women, you know, it's that time of the month and, and it's the full moon, they're like, oh. Right. Oh, I mean, yeah, women she are on a lunar cycle. Yeah. I think there's something very powerful oh, about yeah. that. Right? That but that same person like, oh, oh, people get crazy when there's a full moon. It's like, so do you believe in it? Because the theory? energy right. of, of the different cycles can have a slight pull. Yeah. Can you think about it this way? energetic pulls. Definitely. Energetic Our bodies influence. are made and of how much use, water? 
Exactly. Yeah. Right. How if much the water? Has, if the moon controls the tides, and it does, it's not that it has an effect. That the moon controls the tides. So yeah, if the moon controls the tides, and we're X amount of water. Well, the sun does too. Control then part of we the would tides. be controlled by yeah. that as well. Oh, so that's yeah. why people get all fucked up when there's like eclipses and shit. Yeah. No, because look, so Carrie, if you think Big about how, how gravity works, right? The sun, <laughs> let's say it's here. Mm. If we didn't have the moon, all our water would only get pulled well, yeah. to the sun because that would be the <laughs> biggest source of energetic pull. Yeah. Since we have a moon, now we have tides, right? So, but the sun's motion, mm-hmm. everything in, influences us. That's well, what, of course it does. Isn't that what Even astrology is based on? Yes. Astrology's whole premise is based on the fact that this gravitational entity way far away from you Mm -hmm. is so powerful so energetically dense and it affects you it affects you so Mm -hmm. far away because our energy is so small yeah. Look at how little we are. Oh, I guess yeah. that like has to do Especially with astrological. Us. I guess that, that ties in with astrological <laughs> you're too, science. Actually, even though you're I'm fine, fine. Yeah, I'm really long, long and lengthy yeah. for a short person. Yeah. Spanish yeah. Spanish we were talking about that on the way here. I said if I fought at 105, I would have be such insane. a weird person to fight. That's insane. She has like a seven-inch reach or some shit like that. Yeah. From over here. Yeah, she has like a seven-inch reach at like five five. Right, she's like 65 inches tall with like a 70 or 71 inch reach. That's it's insane. That's crazy. My legs are 40 inches. Reach. Like I could kick someone before they know. How like is like yeah. the same as John Jones. With the, with the oh, right John Jones. Yeah, she's all hip. Yeah, she she's all hip. She's all torso. the John Jones of the Adam Wade division. Like, you, would be, that'd be insane. That would be scary. <laughs> I'm so sad. She's so tall. Yeah. She's so nice. She's not tall. Fuck, please, sometimes we'll take a picture of my wife's like, my wife's like, what's Carrie? Like, 5'10? I was like, she's 5'5. Five, five. She has the I look reach like a yeah. of a 5'10. Yeah, 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 you know, five, yeah ten I try reach. not to. I used to uh, show people my reach a lot. And I have a picture of me, and I was like running into the ocean with a dress on. And you could see it because I have my arms stretched yeah. out. And people are like, oh, you're really fucking long. And I'm yeah. like, no, I just look. Really long. I'm very, de- I'm very deceiving. My Actually, whole body they thought like, that what? she was an amputee because the picture cut off her arm. Like yeah. that, they were like, "Oh, you don't have, you're missing an arm. <laughs> She's so long." It's <laughs> like, "Oh, I can be too fun." <laughs> it's crazy. Mm-hmm. Oh so yeah. So you headed after like New York. You're yeah. in New York another couple of days, right? Yep. And yep. then what you got on the menu after that? Um, I'm thinking about going down the. Well, actually, I'm going to go down to Florida. Yes. Um, Florida's wide open. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Oh, we got to go where Steve Roll is. He just came back from Florida. Yeah, we should uh, stay until Thursday. <laughs> I'm I think I'm going to go to Florida. And yeah, right. If you to... just drove. No airplane ticket? Yeah. Stay until Thursday. Yeah, stay Thursday. Yeah. Come know. back for another podcast. We'll have for both we'll of podcast. You could do your thing you wanted to do. The Twitch. Yep. Oh, shit. I don't, I, don't mm-hmm. have the, I don't have the game capture card. I don't have the thing to actually stream it. How much, um, we could get them, there's like places all over the place. Okay. How much do those cars cost? I don't know. We'll, we'll, go, we'll look it we'll up. We'll figure it out. Yeah. I'll get Listen, one. Yeah. like my client said this morning, he was like, if car. you have money to spend, spend it. You do anything. Listen, I'm a firm <laughs> believer in that. Okay. I'm a firm believer in enjoy what you have because one, money, especially looking at COVID, money is just literally relative. Mm-hmm. And because people didn't have, People didn't save cash, mm-hmm. so all a lot of people had was credit. So money's just definitely relative. So money I'm all a fan of just a like, medium. Yeah, so I I'm saying like you know what, enjoy it, enjoy life because you you, you will have you live every day. Like okay. think about you live this. every day. Yeah, let's look at Alicia as a good example. Live it. A lot of people would say, I hear what a lot of people would say. They you'd be like, oh, I wish I could just you know travel around and drive, mm-hmm. and they could. Yeah, too. She's like, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. not spending like, a ton of fuck load of money. I'm yeah. like, yeah. do I'm doing my, my, my heart. money's a medium. You don't <laughs> yeah. need to do it yeah. super fucking fancy. No. Yeah. Like if it's something you want to do, and I, I know it's people, fun to I do it that way. Everywhere. Yeah. Like, I'm I'm fighting. Just, yeah. I, that's what I love about the martial arts. I can yeah. go anywhere. Everywhere you go, in yeah. the, like, like for martial and, arts, and it's even, like, you know, I have even a home. if I don't want to train the whole time that I'm down there, like martial arts is kind of like a family. It is. Like wrestling has always kind of been the same way. So like. Martial arts is literally the exact same way. It is. So, like, um, 
I know people everywhere I'm going, and there's definitely places along the way that I'm going to stay mm-hmm. just for myself. Because you can, yeah. too. Yeah. You know, and I've been told by so many people, you know, you should come out here. Like, dude, you come and stay with me. Like, every, I've been told to go. My, one of this girl wanted me to go to Australia. She's like, dude, you, you know how many people you can stay with? I'm like, I know, but, like, right. you know, I don't know if I was ready to, like, do that. Yeah. Like, I'm yeah. so weird. I'm actually, like, that's another fear of mine. And we were talking about that. Mm-hmm. And, like, not, well, not because of COVID. Before that, I was always afraid of traveling. Like, I'm... Not really. Yeah. I'm not really a plane I person. I was kind of killed all my travels. I don't like planes at all, and I feel like there's enough for me to be able to explore in the United States that I can do uh-huh. and see whatever I want via a vehicle, mm-hmm. and I'm in control of it. Yep. I'm like, um, I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna split my trip up into two different trips. Mm-hmm. So I want to go out near um, Las Vegas and um, California, but I think I'm gonna do that another trip. I think I want to make that oh, its own love, thing. You ever hiked the desert in Vegas, the Red Rocks? Uh, no, I would love that though. Still, um, this save so that for, for next year when the world yep. goes back to normal. Yep, so I'll come with you. Come with you. Definitely. 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 No, the, yeah. like after January. Well, yeah. So wait, for, for this trip, it'll be better though, better than normal. The the main things that I need to see are like mountains. And beaches, like the ocean. Like For this that, trip. That's, you'll that's, see that's all on, on your way yeah. down to Florida, yeah. you will see, you'll drive through the mountains yeah. and the Carolinas and all that stuff. So you'll be able to see I that. Like and if you beach. wanted to go inland, you could go even further into the states inland. If you, and you drive around. down to Florida, yeah. if you drive down to Florida, it's not a Myrtle Beach along the way. It's beautiful, I've heard. Little beach area. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a good spot halfway. I haven't been to Myrtle Beach in years. It's a nice halfway spot. I mean, now it's not exactly summer, but you know what? And then on your way out, is Tennessee, the, is Tennessee yeah, on the way down or up to the other pla- uh, up the other way you're going? Because Tennessee, I've heard, is beautiful. I think that's more. Yeah, I would yeah, go there. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we didn't even talk about any of the fights this weekend. Well, we can talk about that Thursday. We'll talk about that Thursday. I'm just happy that Aljo is going to get the title shot yeah, from Jan, yeah, against yeah, Jan yeah. because was, I guarantee it was so trying to scum bag on my train with Aljamain Sterling. Uh, and they've been trying to skip him for that 135 pound title so shot. What's the right? Right? And they had that fight with Marlon Marias and Sandy again. Mm-hmm. And I feel like if yeah, Marias would have won, if Marias did what Sandy again did, they would have gave Marias the jump. But since Aljo just beat Sandhagen, good, mm-hmm. good to go. Um, Alicia, yeah, so good having you here. I'm excited Thank to train you. a little bit afterwards. Me too. You know, nice being here. Yeah. Uh, we're definitely always in the yeah, girls' corner. Yeah, if you corner. stay till Thursday, we'll definitely do. We we'll definitely yeah, do more. Yeah. You know. Whenever in, you're in New York, and uh, I'd love to make a trip out there, and train with your crew. Definitely should. You know. We actually um, uh, at my gym. We actually have a podcast room. Awesome. Sure, because they probably have way more space to do stuff. It's huge. I was just seeing pictures, and you could tell it's right. You know, the yeah. real estate in New York is it's expensive. You could tell it's just a huge show. Oh, the, the gym is huge, and um, yeah, the, the gym is huge. We have we have a nice uh, setup. Yeah, in New on. York, it's hard to have huge yeah. huge spaces. And but, they uh, do. Yeah, I'm excited to go to go train. Cool. Chill out. I love making the connections and fighting. The martial yeah. way is definitely. Yeah. Uh, I'm excited. That's the best way when you know the way. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I, think, the, other way. I think you would enjoy enjoy the gym. Good, good vibes. I think so too. Good people. Yeah, yeah if I haven't, everybody, everybody at that trains out of there. I'm friends with on mm-hmm. Facebook, and we've literally talked. I talked to every single person. Everybody, like at <laughs> all the different walks of life at at the gym. Knows who you are. Talks yeah. so great about you. Yeah. <laughs> that makes me so happy because it's. So, I'm literally like I realized it the other day. I didn't realize that all of you train together. So I was like, holy shit! I really am. Like I'm friends with the conspiracy theories. You are I'm friends with the yep. non. The co- then you have like the ones that are, but like through like Morgan yep. and Mitzi are very religious and spiritual. Yep. So they're a different co- kind of that end of it. And then you have Kay, and she's amazing. And yep. I want we, we should interview her this week about her journey. We should. She's a mother. She just had a tummy tuck, and she's a fighter. So I think mm-hmm. that that would just be an amazing I agree, yeah. interview. Yeah. And we, and should, we should also in- interview Tabitha. I want do that too yeah that's yeah. a given we're gonna yeah. do that this I week she's that. awesome yeah. her training partner is amazing she's such a you could tell she's such a good soul and yeah. i've just i've literally watched her from a you know from <laughs> a far little angle oh, um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I like yeah. Yeah. Wait, thursday you can have her yes. zoom in or some shit. yes but oh, yeah, what's crazy about tabitha as soon as i made my switch she kind of made her switch so 
kind of been on this journey together in 2020. Yeah. I love it. I love it. It's really great. And it's good to see women, you know, yeah. get together, help each other out. Yeah. Good. I think uh, that's huge. Um, yeah, definitely. I said it earlier, I feel like an MMA mom. Like, yeah. I'm like very, like, I kind of like talk to all the girls and stuff. So right. it was kind of funny. Right. No, your so mom, I love your mom. Yeah. I talked to your mom. She's awesome. Definitely. I, I was going to say favorite. earlier, really but like, my mom is so supportive. My mom is the shit. She's amazing. My mom is so supportive. She's, I'm going to jump yes, in right there. She's amazing. Yes. As a 41 um, year old woman that's probably close to her age, oddly oh, enough, shit, you, you know, could yeah. be, I could have a kid in their 20s. So. I am like an MMA mom. It's so weird. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like you are, um, your mom's what, like 45? I think so, yeah. Holy yeah, shit. I, I don't know. I, yeah, uh, that's crazy. Maybe a little bit older. I, I yeah, she looks, yeah, she looks young. Yeah. Yeah, yeah she, she's pretty young. Yeah. Um, what I was going to say earlier yeah, is it's, right? it's pretty crazy what MMA has done for me back to, like, girls. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So a lot of the time I've, I've heard that girls that are alphas don't really like to be they're not really friends, but all of my friends are alphas. Yep. All of them. And I have friends that are my age, a little bit younger, and then a bit older. Yep. Like, even, even... It's true. Uh, yeah. I have yeah. friends all over the age gap right yeah. now that are girls and females, and it's amazing. And yeah. I was actually talking to... I used to uh, co-host um, the East Coast MMA show, mm-hmm. and my host, uh, Tom Kilkenny, had ran that show forever. Mm-hmm. And he's like, you know what's great about you? Because he watched... A bunch of us, uh, he brought in a couple journalists that were in the fight community, and I was the only girl. Mm-hmm. And he's like, what's funny is is that the one guy, he's like definitely alpha, mm-hmm. but he's like, you're way more alpha than he is, and you knew exactly when to step back and when to go, mm-hmm. okay. And he's like, and you literally know when to pull it out and take it out. And I'm like, yeah. well, I kind of, it's I'm 41, I learned how to like kind of harness that alpha chick, because I can't be that yeah. all the time. Yeah. So I, I think that actually is like the, the true alpha. Yeah. You don't really have to play that card all the time. Why? Why do like, I need to? Right, yeah. exactly. It's like, like you know you are the alpha. Yeah. You don't need to put on a front. You don't need to act like you are. Yeah. When the time comes that you need to actually be an alpha, that is when you actually It comes be, out. Yeah, oh, yeah. Exactly. Came out yesterday. Was yeah, awesome. that, that's also, <laughs> that also comes with having the ego in check. Took me a long time for that too. Yeah. It took me, I mean, like so many failures and so many uh, kicks in the head, so to speak. Like I've had a lot of fucked <laughs> exactly. up things happen that yeah. I had to really just put myself aside and say, you know what? This is like the, take situations for what they are. Yeah. And it's taken me a. It's actually really done me a really good service in my mm-hmm. career and my adult life. Now at forty one years old, I don't take things so personally. Mm-hmm. I used to get really offended when people didn't like me. I used to get so upset when people didn't like me. I was like, motherfucker. Yeah. I wanted everybody to like yeah. me, and I don't know why. Yeah. I have no idea why I wanted everybody to like me. <laughs> and I would get generally upset when they did it. Now I don't care. Yeah, no, I don't care. I'm like, ah, yeah. that is what it is. Yeah. But yeah, so I know we got to train. We got to Ladies, I'm sure we yeah. could talk all day, but we're going to run out of film again. Like, okay. We have more podcasts. Uh, uh, we are now exiting yeah. the animal zone. Yeah. See, when you have two powerful women on the show, yeah. sometimes yeah. Yeah. Talk the two hours. Hours. Exactly. You know what? When you're secure in your masculinity, you don't have to worry about it's true. Uh, getting overwhelmed. <laughs> so, we have it's a really, really good value. Really you, no, we have a really good I love hearing what you have to say. That's why mm-hmm. you're making quiet. Yeah. Yeah. No, you, we have a good value. Uh, right. We're not actually going to have a second. Yeah, it's like a marriage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get you later. Yeah.